Psalms 147. Praise ye the Lord. That seems to be the constant theme all the way through Psalms. For it is good to sing praises unto our God. I wonder who you sing praises to. Who are all the jingles for on television that you worship? They forgot? What songs do your church sing? Is it about God? Is God even mentioned? Is Jesus Christ even mentioned in the words of your song? For it is pleasant. What is pleasant? God is pleasant to sing praises to Him. And praise is calmly. It should be everyday thing. The Lord does build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. Now He builds up Jerusalem. You would think today, well, that. Yeah, but the Lord did not destroy Jerusalem. Man in his sin destroys. God doesn't destroy. Man does. You wait till when sin is gone. You wait to see how glorious and wonderful eternity will be in a place that won't fall apart. You'll have plumbers in New Jerusalem, but they won't need to fix the pipes. You'll have doctors in New Jerusalem, but they won't need to look at you. He heals the broken in heart. That's where you get broken heart from. You don't turn to drugs or alcohol for a broken heart. You turn to God. I think drugs and alcohol will make it worse. He bindeth up their wounds. So there are wounds associated with a broken heart. And God will take care of you. He telleth the number of the stars. Man calls that the zodiac. Man can't tell you. There is no way possible that man will ever tell you how many stars there are. And not only that, he, God, calls them all by their names. God knows every single name of them. God has given names. There are stars out there that have names, and there are stars that have a letter and a number, or a number and a letter. But God calls them all by names, every single star. Have you seen some of the pictures that, that Hubble Tubblestoke brings to us? You get a vast cluster of stars, and God says, each one of those has a name, and I know it. On top of that, Jesus records that God numbers our hairs on everybody's head. You better trust the God that knows it all. You know, that's where that expression comes from. You know it all? Well, no, but my God is. Great is our Lord. A lot of great things on this planet. Of oh, man. I want him here the Lord. And great power. Man will give you great power and charge you for it. You know, the utilities that man will charge you today will have to give an account to God. God's the great power that made H2O, which they charge you. They make it so you can't dig your own well anymore. They got to they gotta pipe it to your house and fill you with a, a poison called fluoride. Isn't that one of the lamentations that Jeremiah speaks about? We have to pay for our own water? That's a lamentation. Where is the city of Daytona uh, well where all the women go? Oh, you can't have all the women do that today. Imagine you have to get a bucket and go get your own water. And God made the water. God made the electricity. And man charges you. God made this planet and they charge you an outrageous rate of land. 
It's all God. His understanding is infinite. God knows it all and understands it all. You're not going to bypass God. You're not going to get nothing on God. The Lord lifted up the meek. And that, those, those are people who are not pride. They're not proud. And he'll lift them up. And not in pride and not in proudness. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Revelation 12 says the wicked will be cast out of heaven, cast to the earth. You gotta watch out for the wicked in the Bible. I know that's talking about people. That also points to, it looks like so far every reference that we've come to, the wicked also points to Satan. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. And fill your belly full and then watch football. That's not what it's about. You know the one day that this country has given to God for thanks is now not even have to do with God. And then you turn around and still say God bless America. That's a joke. Sing praises upon the heart unto our God. Who covers the heaven with clouds. Clouds bring rain. Clouds bring relief from the, the beaten sun. A shade. Clouds are good. Who prepares rain for the earth. Oh, you mean God gives the rain? That means God gives the evaporation. Who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. Who covers the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mount. Let's, let's see that being taught in a public school in the science class today. When was the last time you heard on a weather channel, a uh, news channel, weather? Okay, here we are. God's going to give us a bunch of rain in this area. We want to all thank him because we've been in a drought and we just want to praise God for the rain that he's about to come and say, Lord God, please let it not... Let it come and let it not, you know, just, just liquidate. No, we get the credit to, to Mother Nature. Four tornadoes came down and destroyed a city and, and, and people were killed. And that was an act of God. And glorious rain that came down for our fields and that was an act of Mother Nature. Really? Global warming, El Nemo, and that guy who ran for president. God, he wasn't president. Really? For whatever reason, I don't know, that tsunami that hit Japan a few years back, God was the author of that. I'm not going to say why. I don't know why. Tornadoes are an act of God. Or they're an act of Satan, if you study your Bible. Why? I don't know. I know what sin. Sin. Rain is a blessing of God. Too much of it in Noah's time. He giveth, God giveth to the beast his food. And the to the young ravens which cry. God feeds the animals. What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? What's the dog and cat food? What's it called? The imitation of the Bible? What's it called? It's called I am's. You broke apart those words? I am? What a name to choose for a dog and cat food unclean animals. I am? Who's the I am of the Bible? God and Jesus Christ, and you're going to put that on your on your dog food? You have just taken the name of God? Wow. Of all the, the things that they could have chosen, I am. I saw that the, the one couple months ago, something like that, and I'm just staring at that name. I am, I am. Wow. You stole the name of God. 
The Ravens would cry. No oh, poor little Ravens. That's not the kind of cry. That's, you know, they're God feed it. You know, a, a raven will cry to God and say, Lord, I'm hungry. God says, okay, there's a worm. There's some corn. Those wicked, nasty crows came and ate my corn. God told them where to find it. The eagle took that little bunny. God told him to get the bunny. <laughs> God tells man, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. No, I've got my own religion. I've got my own thing. Man. He, God, delighteth not in the strength of the horse. So you won't find God at the horse races. God is not interested in your horsepower of your car. God has nothing to do with, with, with the horse in the battle. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. Ah, oh, there's sports. God has no pleasure in sports. And man, his great achievements, you know, I've taken this thing and I threw it through a hoop. I've made it through a line. I've run around bases or, you know, I threw it this far. And I, whatever it is, God says, hmm. that's all. That's all you did. I've got a guy over here who just witnessed to somebody and his soul was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I hear the angels stood rejoicing. No angel rejoices because a guy took a ball and did something that he was paid over a billion dollars to do. Now, the guy takes the ball and doesn't do what he's supposed to do for a billion dollars. I take the billion dollars back. You know, if I go to if I go to a, a, a hamburger joint and that guy don't give me the hamburger, he ought to lose his job. So if that guy don't catch the ball, he should lose his job. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. You gotta look at things reality. You are watching an overpaid person to do something stupid that a seven-year-old can do. And then look at where all our sports today they're leaning to. Look at the corruption. We beat Babe Ruth. Yeah, but you Babe Ruth didn't do it with drugs. He did it with the love for the sport. He didn't have the, the you know the shoes and the, the stuff that you had. You didn't break. You did not break Babe Ruth's record in a modern world. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear Him. Oh, there you go. Okay. Mr. Ball player, you can't pray and, and praise the Lord at the end of, at the end zone. I can't. No, you cannot. You'll lose your job. Okay. That man feared feared man more than God. I'm going to give God the credit. I'm going to rest my life on the Lord Jesus Christ because hey, listen, I'm not saying he's not saved, but I'm going to give God the credit. And if you won't let me look, give God the credit, then let's see you suffer the consequences. I'm going to give God the credit no matter what. I don't care what all those fans think. I am worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ, and He gets the credit. Why is it that a guy can't? Praise God to end in the end field. But oh, when, when a sodomite comes out in the movie in Hollywood. Yay! How are you doing? Yay! He's getting married. Yay! Why can you do that? But you can't give Jesus Christ the credit. Why are Christians backing down? And we need a new president so we can have... No! You don't need a new president. You need to stand up. You need a man. You need to put the armor on. And you need to fight. And if you're going to stand for Sodomites, we're going to stand for Jesus. If you're going to stand for Booze, we're going to stand for Jesus. How about that? We're going to do what's right and we're going to stand for right. 
You may go to jail, you may lose my job. And Paul had the greatest jail ministry anybody could have. It was approved by God. He could even sing praises in jail one night and one guy gets it. He was not witnessing to the jailer. The jailer was half asleep, if not sleeping. And him and Silas, yeah, we're just having a good old time singing to the Lord. Yeah, aren't we? Uh, wow, did you feel that? All the doors are opening up. And the jailer comes into their cell. Paul and Silas did not even witness. No, maybe they witnessed to him during the day. But in the story of Acts 16, the jailer comes into Paul and Silas and said, What must I do to be saved? Man, if somebody came to me on the street and said, What must I do to be saved? I, you have to take over because I'll have a heart attack. I'd be dead and glorious, and Lord would be like, You missed that opportunity. And you got Christians that will come up to you when you're serving the Lord. You ought not to do that. You ought to read your Bible. It has been done from, from Noah all the way to the end. You know the 144,000 in the tribulation are going to be doing what we do in the streets of Daytona Beach, Florida, that they tell us that we ought not to be doing? Under the threat of losing their heads? And all the Christians out there, oh, sports and, and, and politics. And man, God says, uh, I'd rather have those that fear me. And those that hope in his mercy. Lord, if I, if I give you the credit, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble with man. But you are important. You are the one. I don't know what you're going to do, Lord, but the Bible says if man tells me to, that something that violates the scriptures, the Bible says that I am to do what is right and take the consequences. And Lord, I'm going to rely on your mercy and whatever happens, I'm going to praise your, Lord, your name and look at what they did to Peter and, and John when he said, listen, we're going to obey the Lord more than you. And you look at the rest of the, the book of Acts and what Peter and John did. Peter, again, is in jail. His life has been put, uh, he's going to die, and the guy is sound asleep. That is the hope of the mercy. I'm going to bed. God take care of it. The angel had to smack him across the face a couple times to wake him up. You think Herod was like that that night? You think he was sleeping like a baby? Praise the Lord, old Jerusalem. Imagine a city crying out to God. Do you know a city that cried out to God and God says, Well, I'm just going to back off my wrath on you and I'm going to give you guys a whole bunch of blessings. Nineveh. I like, you even dressed the cows in sackcloth. I, I, I'm going to back. You know, he didn't stop the judgment. And they praise the Lord. Praise thy God, O Zion. You think they're praising the God of the Bible? You got a bunch of religions running around in Jerusalem today. You go to Jerusalem, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm going to go see the Holy Land. And then you pay a Roman Catholic to guide you around to teach you the Roman Catholic Jerusalem. It's just a place where Jesus was. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Hebrew says he died outside the gate. Uh, you guys are messed up. How many heads of John the Baptist do you have in your churches? You got three of them? 
Really? And I'm going to let you guide me around the, the, the Holy Jerusalem? I can't even trust you with a little boy. For he, God, has strengthened the bars of thy gates of the city. There are no bars of the gates there today. Back when this psalm was written. And sin built up and sin built up and sin decayed those bars. You do know that the sin of America is going to reach a point. God's going to say, that's it, I'm done with you. If he did it to his people, don't you think he's going to do it to a bunch of dead idiots? They say, oh, we're a Christian nation. Listen, you're going to bring your own judgment upon you. Your money says in God we trust. God's going to say, you keep using my name like that. What, what do we read in Ezekiel now? They, they follow my holy name. They take my holy name. They make it a stink. And you say that, you know, when God we trust and all that. And God's going to say, listen, I've had enough of you. That's exactly what he did to Jerusalem. I've had enough of you guys. Our sins have reached worse than what Judah. He, God, has blessed thy children within thee. Went to the millennium, he sees what he does to the Jews. A blessing. He maketh peace in thy borders. And that's not today. Under David, and when David was king, Besides the family problems, but under Solomon there was peace in the land. And filleth thee with the finest of wheat. So you can make bread. He sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. You know all the places in the world that the Bible is actually being preached on the streets? He giveth snow like wool. I'm glad I'm not living on that no more. But God gives the snow. God gives the snow. I'll say again, God giveth the snow. That's pretty. When the plows and all that don't get to it. A nice little river and uh, covered bridge. It's pretty. Why don't you give God the credit for that? But all the disasters, you, oh, it was an act of God. You, know, you see a snow-covered tree with a cardinal there. And why don't you give God the credit and say, Lord, thank you. That's beautiful. He scatters the whore for us. Like ashes. He, God, he causes, excuse me, he casts forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? You know, armies have been destroyed because of the cold. There, are war, there were war battles that even tanks couldn't get through because it was too cold. And you're going to conquer God? You know an entire city gets shut down because of snow and ice on the roads? And you're going to fight against God? Salt is getting pretty costly and God's and you use it to, to do my snow and ice, but it's getting too costly for you. God can shut down an entire country just by snow and ice. And what do you what do you call global warming? Another ice age. Put that guy in his underwear and let him go live in Antarctica for four years. He sendeth out his word and melteth them.
God's word melteth the snow and ice? You ever try to ask God, say, God, I'm, I gotta go to work and the roads are terrible and I need money. God, can you put forth your word for the snow to melt in the roads? And you ever ask God to do that? I never did. I relied more on the plows. Sorry to say. But the Bible says he sent out his word and melted them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters to flow. You mean like the tsunami in Japan? You mean like the floods that destroy places? You mean the high and low tides? You mean the rivers and streams? Don't give it to Mother Nature the, the credit. That's a beautiful stream. Just listen to that little stream. And we heard when there were great rains and the ice and snow were melting up north. And we went to the river there and, and, and the waterfalls and how loud that thing was. And you give God the praise. You know what you were to learn from that waterfall? There are places in the Bible that, that says, the Bible says that's what God sounds like. The Bible says God's, God's voice sounds like thunder. You're to listen to thunder and think about, that's what God sounds like. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Again, we talked about that the other night. That gets rid of the Arabian and Ishmael. It is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 boys. There's no Ishmael there. It rules out Allah. It rules out Muhammad. Muhammad and Allah are not the gods of the Bible when you say Jacob because Muhammadans and Islam are from Ishmael. Ishmael did not have a son named Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. And that's the law that Moses wrote. He, God, has not dwelt so with any nation. America! You are not the nation of God. You came over here with a Bible. You landed in Massachusetts. The Indians helped you out. Then you came over here and started killing the Indians. And then you took the Bible and started a church and started persecuting people with the Bible who loved you. And you forced them out of your new Jerusalem. You forced them out of the city of the light. And you forced them away into Rhode Island. And then you gave in when it came to the Constitution without no Jesus, no God. And yeah, we'll, we'll give religious freedom to everybody. Really? You mean even the ones that will chop the head off innocent people? They have a they have the right of the Constitution. If that is their religion, the Constitution says they can do it. Don't you cry, baby. Don't you hate me. You know what? If you want to be a righteous nation under God and under the Bible, the Bible says take those people and get them out. Get rid of them. Destroy their altars. Destroy their works. No, you let them come in. I'm not saying you kill them. Not in this church age. But you don't let them in your gates. America trained the pilots of 
America tra trained Bin Laden as an architect for in God we trust cash credit or whatever you want to pay the only nation that God recognizes a nation is Israel and you better get that as a Bible biblical fact there are no Americans in eternity but there are still Abraham Isaac Jacob and the 12 tribes Israel better get that you better know that and as for his judgments they have not known them who's that nations they don't know what the law was Israel did where do you find God going to a heathen saying thou shalt not thou shalt not thou shalt not why so he can have Israel as that that, that a group of people to that he is their God and they are his people and this is what you need to do to be my people and this is what you need to do to be to be that I may be your God and you're to you're to live in a way that other people look at you and say you are weird in particular you are well what is wrong with you You worship the one God. And when Daniel's deal, dealing with Nebuchadnezzar, and you've got the only God. It is your, even if I got the gods on the knick-knack, patty whack table, it is your gods above all the gods. I think it's Sire. He, he walks up to the, to the lion's den. Daniel? Yes, O King. The Lord came in here and his angels shut the... You got the God! A little girl t tells Naaman, if you go to my people and God will heal you of the leprosy. The only reason why the Gentiles are in now because we are a stumbling, we are a stumbling stone to the Jews. Because the Jews reject the Messiah, God says, I'm going to call those dead dogs in. I'm going to give them an opportunity. It angers a Jew when he's walking down the street and he hears people preaching all over America, all over the world, all over the place, and saying, Jesus saves! A Jew hates that! And when we quote from his Bible, let me read to you Isaiah 53. A Jew hates that. Praise ye the Lord. We end that again like we ended last night. We start off with praise ye the Lord. We end off with praise ye the Lord. Who are you to praise the Lord? And we're going to start the chapter, Lord willing, tomorrow night. Praise ye the Lord. And we're going to end with praise ye the Lord. And we're going to start off again, Lord willing, praise ye the Lord. And we're going to end with praise ye the Lord. And we're going to start again at the last chapter of Psalms, Lord willing, praise ye the Lord. And we're going to end the Psalms with, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You know what God records, I think, these final chapters? I think he records what you praise. Oh, it's great. I have a baby now. and Michael, yeah? Did you hear them give me the praise about that baby? No, they just praise they got a baby. Okay. Gabriel, he, he got that job he wanted. He prayed for, right? Did you hear him give me the credit? No. Oh. Okay. 
Grandma got saved. Believe, believe me as her savior. All the angels are rejoicing. Uh, an angel number whatever. An angel what's your name? Did he give me the praise? Angel, what did he just praise? A guy with a ball. Oh. His stocks went up. Oh. How many souls he won? He won? Did I record that right? That he won? Oh. You better mark the word of God that at the judgment seat of Christ Christian, God's going to count and show you what you praise and what you didn't praise. It finishes the Psalms. The last chapters are praise ye the Lord. How more can God knock you on the head with a ball peen hammer and say praise ye the Lord? It finishes the book. If you had a, the Psalms in a, in a Psalm book, just the Psalms, as a hymnal, you, they would finish with praise ye the Lord. Let me check some of those. Let me go back here. Real quick. The Bible start, uh, the Psalm starts off, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor stands in the seat of the scornful. It's, the Psalm starts off happy and ends up with praise ye the Lord. Job ended up praising the Lord. And his book started with praise in the Lord. Revelation 4 says, verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure... They are and were created. The main reason why you were created was praise ye the Lord. Now when did man step into that? Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus says.
the mountain tops.